Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHY U601. In this lecture, I'll explain the tunneling effect, and this is the lecture plan. We will first revise the one-dimensional step function potential that we discussed in last lecture, and here the emphasis will uh, rather be on the procedure than the results. Then we will describe. the potential barrier which is uh, the potential that is to be solved to study the tunneling effect then we will write the schrodinger's equation for this potential barrier and uh, instead of uh, deriving in in detail i'll discuss the final result which is uh, which is widely known as quantum tunneling effect and in the end we will study this important technique a uh, scanning tunneling microscope or stm uh, is the abbreviation which is used many times which uses the tunneling effect to characterize the surface morphology of various materials and to understand how the uh, electron charge density is distributed in the, on the surface of the material so let's quickly revise the one dimensional step potential so the potential one dimensional step potential can be graphically the uh, shown like this where we have this as the x axis and this is the potential and the potential step now is such that the potential is zero till we have x is equal to 0 and after this point the potential jumps to some constant value which let's say is v0 so the potential mathematical can mathematically can be written like this v of x is equal to it's 0 for x less than or equal to 0 and is equal to 0 oh sorry v0 for x greater than 0 now we can see that there is discontinuity in the potential function at x is equal to 0 and therefore we have to write it in two steps and while solving the schrodinger's equation or solving this problem uh, the procedure which followed is as follows we first wrote down the schrodinger's equation and since we have the discontinuity in the function we have to write schrodinger's equation separately for region 1 and for region 2 sorry this has to be region 2 so we wrote the schrodinger's equation in both the regions then we matched the boundary conditions or we match the wave function so boundary conditions and here we use two boundary conditions first boundary in the first boundary condition we matched the wave function at the boundary which is at x is equal to 0 and in the second boundary condition we match the uh first derivative of wave function in region 1 and in region 2 of course and this gives us two equations two simultaneous equations and for there are three unknowns that we get in the solution of the schrodinger's equation and uh, by solving these two uh, simultaneous equation or rather uh, there are now uh, what we have there are three unknowns three coefficients for the wave function for uh, region 1 and 2 combined and we get two boundary conditions we get two equations from the two boundary conditions and uh, we can now write the two unknowns two coefficients in the wave function in term of uh, in terms of the third one which gives us the transmission coefficient and reflect reflection coefficient where this transmission coefficient is the probability that uh, the particle uh, transmits through this potential barrier whereas uh, whereas r is the probability that the particle is reflected from the uh, barrier so this is how we solve the uh, the the uh, one dimensional step function potential now uh, let's move on to the potential barrier on the next slide 
so potential barrier is again a potential uh, a, a graph where on x axis we have the position x and on x a y axis we have the potential as a function of x and the potential is zero till x is equal to minus l till this point and then it jumps to a constant value say v0 and it stays constant till x is equal to plus l by 2 this is minus l by 2 and this is plus l by 2 so the width of this barrier is l because we are uh, considering the boundaries at l, l by 2 and l plus 2 the width of this barrier is l and the height of the barrier is v0 so let's note it down v0 is the height of the barrier and l is the width of that barrier if we have to write it mathematically now you can see that there are three distinct regions and we have to write uh, three equations because we have two discontinuities now we have the first discontinuity here at x is equal to minus l by 2 and we have the second discontinuity here at x is equal to l by 2 and therefore we have to write the potential as three different equations now in, di in three different um, uh, steps so v of x is 0 for x less than or equal to minus l by 2 it is equal to v0 for x greater than minus l by 2 and is less than l by 2 and is again equal to 0 when x is greater than or equal to plus l by 2 so this is how we can write uh, the potential barrier so this is the the potential and now of course to study the tunneling effect we have to solve the schrodinger's equation and now uh, just like the let me raise this just like the uh, one dimensional potential there can be two cases first one is when e is less than v0 so case 1 can be e is less than v0 whereas the case 2 is e greater than v0 this many times case 2 many times is called as the scattering st uh, scattering um, states whereas this case 1 is uh, it gives rise to the tunneling effect so basically uh, what we will do is we'll focus on the first case. We we are not going to uh, get into de uh, get into the details of second case. So we will here consider that energy of the particle is less than uh, v zero height of the potential barrier and tunneling effect is basically as follows. What happens is the particle is is incident on this potential barrier such that the kinetic energy and hence the total energy of the particle is equal to zero because potential is sorry kinetic energy is less than the, the put height of the potential barrier so it doesn't have sufficient kinetic energy to overcome the barrier classically therefore the particle will be reflected with probability one it will never transmit through the barrier but in quantum mechanically what happens is there is a non-zero probability that the particle tunnels through the potential barrier and uh, is is uh, or rather it continues to move towards positive x direction uh, in this third region so uh, this this tunneling effect is important in many cases it is used for studying the alpha decay it is used for uh, it, it is used in tunneling uh, scanning tunneling microscope as we will study and it is also useful um, in tunnel, it is also used in tunnel diodes. So we will uh, we will consider the second application, STM. Uh, now let's consider let's uh, consider how this can be solved. So this is the tunneling effect, and we saw we start by solving Schrodinger's equation first. This is x-axis. This is potential, and as I already mentioned, this height of the potential barrier is v0, whereas width is l so that this boundary is at minus l by 2 and this boundary is at plus l by 2 now because there are three distinct regions let me call this as region 1 this is region 2 
and this is region 3 and we have to write Schrodinger's equation for each of the regions separately. So let us let me write I have already uh, split the screen into three parts. So in region 1 the Schrodinger's equation looks like this. It is minus h cross square by 2m d2 psi 1 by dx2. This in uh, subscript 1 here suggests that it is the wave function in first region. Potential in this region is equal to 0. So the second term of Schrodinger's equation is 0 and right hand side is e into psi 1 and therefore I can rearrange this equation and write this as t2 psi 1 by dx2 is equal to minus k square psi 1 where k square or rather let us write k, k is equal to square root of 2 m e by h cross square. Notice here that k is a positive constant. So, this is our Schrodinger's equation in region 1. In the second region, the Schrodinger's equation is as follows. Here we have the first term as minus h cross square by 2 m and the second derivative of the wave function with respect to x plus now the potential is not 0 but since the height of the barrier is v0, the potential is v0 psi 2 and this is equal to e of psi 2. Remember here that psi 2 is function of x and now I can re re rewrite this equation as d2 psi 2 by dx2 is equal to k prime square into psi 2 where k prime is a positive number which is 2m v0 minus e by h cross square. Is that correct? Yeah, it seems all right. And note and uh, and since we are considering the, the the case where e is less than v0 for studying the tunneling effect, this k prime also is a positive constant. Now notice here. The difference between the first and second uh, or difference between the Schrodinger's equation in first and second region. In, in the first region we have a negative sign here and the k square is a positive constant whereas in this case that negative sign is absent and, and we have already seen in the previous lecture the implication of this. For region 1 the wave function turns out to be a complex wave function, a traveling wave solution whereas in the second region it is now the exponentially decaying and exponentially increasing wave function. We will see that and it is no longer complex wave function and region 3 is same as the first region and therefore in region 3 the Schrodinger's equation is also uh, just it is the Schrodinger's equation is just like the equation in the first region which is minus k square by psi 3 where k is square root of 2 m e by h cross. So, we have now three Schrodinger's equation or uh, Schrodinger's equation in three different regions. There are no uh, three different Schrodinger's equation. We are using the same equation, same Schrodinger time independent equation and using it for the three different regions and therefore, we have three differential equations which corresponds to Schrodinger's equation in each region and we have to of course, solve these equations now. Now, in region 1, we would, uh, I mean, I will write the solution in each of these region now. So, in region 1, the solution is as follows. Psi 1 is equal to A into E to the power I k x plus B into E to the power minus I k x, where k, remember, is square root of 2 m E by h cross square. In region 2, as I said, now the equation is no longer the traveling wave solution. It is real uh, solution now. Psi 2 is C into e to the power k prime x plus d into e to the power minus k prime x, where k prime is square root of 2 m v0 minus e by h cross square. Now, I want uh, to I want you to focus uh, on, on this equation here, the equation in second region. In the previous example, in the example of one dimensional step function potential, we discarded this second uh, 
uh, or rather we discarded the first term and that was because uh, the first term blows up when x tends to infinity and therefore and and, and that region was also or that uh, range extending to infinity was also present in the second region and therefore the second or rather the first term is not acceptable solution in, in, in the second region and therefore we kept only the second term. But in this case now x minus infinity as well as x plus infinity is not in second region. The region doesn't have x tending to plus or minus infinity and therefore we cannot get rid of any of these equations. Both these any of these terms. Both the terms are physically acceptable remember that so we cannot get rid of this and then in the third region the solution is going to be just uh, or rather very similar to the solution in first region and it is now equal to I can't of course use the same coefficients and this is uh, now let me use e and f e into e to the power i k prime x plus f into e to the power minus i k prime x. Now notice in this equation that the first term with k prime x it uh, corresponds to a matter wave which is traveling towards positive x axis in this direction e to the power i k prime uh, oh, oh this is not k prime it is simply k which is 2 n e by h cross. So this first term corresponds to the matter wave which is traveling in a positive x direction which is the transmitted wave the wave which is transmitted through this barrier whereas the uh, second term for psi 3 it corresponds to a matter wave which is traveling in negative x direction. Now there is nothing in third region which will cause the wave the matter wave to reflect and therefore we, we there is no uh, physical uh, explanation to why this factor or this term would be there why we why we uh, why we would have a term which is traveling in negative x direction cannot be explained and therefore we don't have we will simply ignore that term so we have only one term and uh, of course k is square root of 2 m e by h cross square here Okay, so what we have to do next, remember we have to calculate the transmission coefficient, the probability that the particle is transmitted and let, let's go on to the next slide uh, and, and uh, see how we can obtain the transmission coefficient. Let me write the solution uh, of Schrodinger's equation in each of this region. This is A into e to the power i k x plus b into e to the power minus i k x. In the second region the solution is psi 2 which we have written as e to the power c into e to the power i k prime x plus t into e to the oh sorry this is this is the real solution this is not i and minus k prime x so this is the solution the second region and in the third region the solution is again very similar to the first equation which is now e into e to the power i k x where k is square root of 2 m e by h cross square a positive constant and k prime is also a positive constant which is 2 m uh, b0 minus e where b0 is height of the barrier L by 2 is the width of the barrier let's not forget that and k prime is also positive because we are considering the case where E is less than V0 we want to discuss the tunneling effect we are not considering the scattering state as I mentioned previously. Now to, uh, to find the transmission coefficient T this is going to be equal to J transmitted probability current density of the transmitted wave divided by j incident. In, in this j incident is basically probability current density corresponding to this term in the solution of the second equation and psi uh, j transmitted corresponds to this term. So this is 
uh, psi incident the first term in the solution in the first region whereas this corresponds to psi transmitted wave function corresponding to the transmitted wave and j transmitted then can be calculated as follows it is h cross k by m into mod e square divided by h cross k by m into mod a square so now here we see that for uh, here what we have is we have five coefficients a b the c d and e so there are five unknowns each coefficient is unknown and therefore we have five unknowns how many boundaries we have in this equation we have two boundaries the first boundary is here at x is equal to minus l by 2 and the second boundary is here at x is equal to l by 2 and we can now use the boundary conditions two boundary conditions for each of the boundary the first uh, boundary condition is going to be uh, matching the wave at the boundaries and the second boundary condition is going to be the match uh, is going to be matching the derivatives first derivatives of the wave function at the boundary and therefore for two boundary uh, boundaries we will get total four simultaneous equations so we will get four equations by using boundary conditions and therefore now we should be able to write four unknowns in term of in terms of one unknowns for example we should we should be able to write a in term e in terms of a and when we do, when we do it when we solve those simultaneous equation and write e in terms of a we should be able to find the transmission coefficient but that i am not going to do we are not going to do uh, get into those mathematical details i'll simply give you the result and this is uh, what tunneling effect is and again summarize this is minus l by 2 where we have the first boundary then this is plus l by 2 where we have the second boundary this height is v0 this is v0 and what we have now in tunneling effect is we have the incoming particle which is traveling from left to right uh, left to right as in the previous case and uh, here we have i'll draw only the incident wave so we have an incident wave like this where the wavelength is decided by the angular wave function k and in second region now we get the decaying uh, decaying wave function we saw that it is e to the power k prime x plus e to the power minus k prime x with the coefficient c and d here so in this region we don't have the traveling wave solution what we get is a decaying solution like this and then in the third region we again get the traveling wave solution which has the same wavelength as the wavelength of incident wave but now its amplitude is decreased because this has amplitude which is a which corresponds to the probability density for that wave function whereas here it's it, it is now going to be e in according to our notation and we have the same wavelength but with decreased amplitude and this amplitude is basically the probability uh, amplitude and therefore there is the probability of transmission is of course going to be smaller than probability of the incoming wave so this is very interesting result because classically it is not possible for the particle to transmit through this barrier because it doesn't have sufficient energy to uh, cross the barrier and therefore particle will never transmit through the barrier in uh, according to classical mechanics but in quantum mechanics what we observe is that there is finite probability that the particle tunnels through the barrier and uh, the it, if it can be written in the equation form as follows when we find the transmission coefficient this is the equation that we will obtain remember the transmission coefficient is to be calculated using this equations as i described before so this is the equation now notice something remember all this term is in the exponential and notice now that the tunneling probability is very sensitive to the length of the barrier or rather width of the barrier this width 
and it exponentially changes as the width is changed. You decrease the width and the probability of tunneling exponentially increases and is also exponential to the square root of V0 minus E. That means if you change the height of the barrier, uh, square root or the, 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 the square root of the difference, uh, I mean the transmission coefficient is now uh, exponentially changes with square root of the difference between V0 and E. And this is this is a very important results because now you can see here that slight change in the width or the difference between the energy and height of the barrier will cause the transmission coefficient to change by a larger value. So the probability will probability of transition will will be very uh, high in that case. And uh, this this is the famous quantum tunneling tunneling effect, which is uh, applicable which is which is uh, reason for many natural phenomena as uh, beta d alpha dk and uh, is also used or rather is used in engineering applications such as tunnel diode and one of the applications that i mentioned that we would study is scanning tunnel scanning electron sorry scanning tunneling microscope so uh, scanning electron sorry Scanning tunneling microscope work uh, is is used for characterization of surface is very important technique in characterization of materials. So it's it's perhaps uh, difficult to over emphasize the importance of this technique. It is used for understanding or for studying the morphology of the surface. So you can understand with scanning tunneling uh, microscope how, uh, how uh, what is the atomic arrangement on a particular surface, and uh, uh, you you also understands the electron density on the surface. So how is electronic density? Electron. Let let me write electron charge density. distribution on the surface so how this is done it is done as follows what is what the basic principle is this so suppose you have this surface which you want to study where these uh, une uneven uh, regions are of very uh, small length they are of the order of nanometers only a couple of uh, only a few atoms are there and if you want to st you want to understand how the atoms are arranged on this surface what is done is you take a very sharp tip this tip is very uh, fine there it is only a couple of or, or a few atoms thick and it is not touching the surface but is very close to the surface again close to the order of nanometers and what you do is you apply some voltage here between the tip and the surface so this width the distance between the the surface and the tip now is acting as the width of the barrier that we that we studied and height of the barrier is equivalent to phi which is the work function which is the energy required for the electron to escape from the surface towards the tip so this is work function and therefore we have a similar uh, 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 potential barrier uh, here set up here between for the electron between this surface and the tip. Now this tip is scanned through the surface and corresponding current is is measured. And from this cu current, wherever the electron density is more, since number of electrons there are more, the pro the the current will be more because more number of electrons will tunnel through. And similarly, if the distance between the the surface and the tip increases the probability of transmission decreases significantly because we saw on the uh, the previous slide that it is exponentially decreases when the width is increased and therefore you can understand from the current that how is the morphology of the surface and similarly you cannot also understand how is the electronic charge density on the next slide uh, we have uh, more sophisticated uh, schematic for scanning tunneling microscope this is taken this diagram is taken from wikipedia and you can see the 
credits uh, on the screen so this is the tip as i said it, it is connected to uh, uh, piezoelectric crystal so that it can now oscillate and this is current amplifier which amplifies the tunneling current and then is is connected to this uh, uh, a control unit now in actual practice what is done is the distance is kept uh, the distance keeps changing and current is kept same so for the same current what should this this tip is moved along the surface it is it scans through the surface and this is the magnified view that you can see here and all these uh, observations electronic observations are fed to the computer that what was the distance between the tip and the surface for a constant current as it scans through the surface and it, it is finally analyzed it gives us the morphology how is the surface uh, atoms and it how the, the atoms on, on the surface are distributed and it also gives us the probability of uh, charge density how are electrons distributed so this is another image which is also taken from wikipedia and it it is uh, you can see that these regions are basically where we have the atoms present and therefore uh, the electronic density around those atoms is more and therefore we get more current and this from this study everything is um, is analyzed and a uh, image is constructed using the computer so this is how the scanning tunneling microscope uh, works and it is perhaps uh, the microscope with highest resolution that we have which can study which can uh, construct the image of single atoms how the single atoms are distributed and it also gives us uh, the morphology whether we have uh, even surface or how are the atoms uh, present on the on the surface so that's all now let's quickly revise we saw uh, uh, the potential barrier so this kind of potential we were we have been discussing then we study the tunneling effect which is basically the concept that the particle incidence on this potential barrier such that this e total energy of the particle is less than height of the potential barrier now classically the particle will surely reflect from uh, from the from the potential barrier because it doesn't have sufficient energy but quantum mechanically there is finite probability that the particle transmits through the barrier and this uh, non zero probability of transmission is called as tunnel effect now classically it seems difficult uh, to understand the tunneling effect because we don't see this happening in classical mechanics but if we look at it from quantum mechanics point of view these particles are basically waves and it is well known that waves can tunnel through the barrier or they they pass through the barrier for example sound can be heard on the other side of wall uh, and this wall now acts as the barrier this is nice example which i uh, which i uh, heard recently and then you have the transmitted wave here which corresponds to the matter wave which is transmitted both these waves have the same uh, same wavelength but their amplitude is different the the amplitude on the amplitude of the transmitted wave is of course less than the amplitude of the incident wave and then we saw one of the very important applications of scanning uh, of of tunneling effect which is the scanning tunneling micro microscope so let's stop uh, thank you for watching